What's up, everybody? We are live from LBT Students at, in the chapel, 982 Brower Road. Hey, I encourage you right now, share this video with somebody who you think should be watching with us and joining us online tonight, whether that's through YouTube, whether that's through Facebook. I encourage you, share this video with somebody, tag somebody in a comment, send it to them in a message. Whatever you got to do, right now is the easiest time to invite somebody to church. It's never going to be easier than it is right now to invite somebody to church because it's all online. They can do it from the comfort of their own house, in their PJs, in their bed, in their underwear, whatever, you know. We all have different things that we do at home. But right now, send out this video to somebody, invite them to join us, um, and we're going to get started here in just a little bit. <laughs> Um, tonight, man, you know what? I forgot to go live today at 5 to let you guys know what we were doing tonight. My bad. So I'm going to let you know right now. we got a couple games. The prizes for the games tonight are the LBT Students t-shirts. That's right. I'm going to be giving away two LBT Students t-shirts. Um, they may or may not be black, depending on your size. We'll find out later in the night. Uh, but we're going to play a couple games, and in order for you to participate in those games... You're going to uh, comment in the comment section of this video, um, different answers to the, the games on the screen. And then Rachel is behind the scenes across town in our house, probably wrangling kids right now. Uh, and she's going to be tallying up who the winner is and sending those to me. Um, at the end of the night, we'll announce who the winners are. Um, but hey, I want to encourage you to continue to share this video with somebody. Thanks for joining us tonight. And we're going to get started right now. So we're going to start with our first game. The first game is uh, Amazing Animals. I told you guys last week um, that when I was young, when I was in grade school, I loved animals. I, lo I had an animal encyclopedia that I used to carry around with me. I, I told you about my little, my little small ones, about amphibians and about reptiles that I had. You know, I was obsessed with animals, and so I love, uh, I love animals. Um, way even more back then, me and my friend in grade school, you know, second, third grade, we both wanted to grow up and go work in the zoo. Um, and we used, to, we used to play at the base of this giant tree with little um, plastic dinosaurs and stuff. And uh, that was how we spent our time. Um, he's not watching this video. But uh, anyways, so yeah, we love animals. So this game... Um, we're going to be showing some different animals, and you're going to guess whether the amazing animal statement on the screen is so right or so wrong. Um, we're going to put a different image. We're going to make a statement about that animal, and then you're going to tell us, is that so right or so wrong in the comments, and we'll tally up who gets those right um, to pick a winner later on tonight. The first animal is an ostrich. An ostrich eye is bigger then it's brain. Um, fun fact about ostrich, they have the largest egg from a bird that exists. Um, they're closely rela related to the velociraptor. Um, yeah, people ride these things. Um, I actually, man, what was that? I think it was Meet the Robinsons or something, or Robinsons or something, that they were like doing a race and one of them was riding an ostrich. I, I just could not imagine riding an ostrich. But is that right? An ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. Let's find out right now. That is correct. An ostrich eye is bigger than its brain. That's a pretty uh, small brain. I wonder how big an ostrich eye is. All right. Scorpions glow in the dark. Um, is that so right or so wrong? Uh, we, I used to have some scorpions. We would actually catch scorpions um, back home in Oklahoma. Uh, we would actually catch them and, and put them in, you know, just whatever container we could come up with, whether it was a mason jar or an actual animal container. Um, but scorpions are fun, uh, but don't get stung by one because that will mess you up. Um, scorpions are kind of one of those freaky things. Uh, but scorpions, do scorpions glow in the dark? Is that so right or so wrong? Let's find out. It's so right but it requires a, a UV or black light necessary to see the phenomenon, but they actually glow in the dark. That's pretty cool. Next one. A reindeer, wait, reindeer eyeballs 
turn blue in the winter to help them see in lower levels of light. Is that so right or so wrong? Reindeer, uh, these do not look like Santa Claus's reindeer. These are what actual reindeer look like. Um, also, reindeer and caribou are very similar. They live up north. Um, yeah. What's the difference? Uh, there's a very, I don't know, even know if there is a difference. They might be the same thing. Um, but yeah. So their eyeballs change in the winter to help them see in lower levels of light. Is that so right or so wrong? And I'm going to say that it is so right. Boom, shakalaka. Uh, I actually knew that one because I've seen pictures of reindeers with blue eyes, and, and that's actually true. That's really interesting. All right, a male platypus, dude, I used to be, okay, uh, let's read the statement first. Male platypuses are non-venomous. Is that so right or so wrong? I used to be obsessed with platypuses. Um, They only live in Australia, Um, and I always wanted one. I always wanted to own a platypus um, because they just look so cool. I mean, they're like a beaver and a duck combined. And they actually have uh, spines behind their wrists, and that's where the venom comes out. Um, But are male platypuses non-venomous? That's the question. Is that so right or so wrong? Let's find out. So wrong. If you get bitten by a platypus, then pray it is a female. Um, I don't know where they come up with the idea that you get bit by a platypus because it's not where the venom comes from. The venom comes from a spine behind the wrist. Next one. Snails can sleep for three straight years. Is that so right or so wrong? Uh, Snails. There's not a whole lot to say about snails. They're pretty slimy and disgusting, and they move really slow. And their shells look really cool. And when you go to the lake or when you go to the beach, you know, you find more snail shells than probably any other type of shell. They're also the most common fossils um, that you can find. is a snail fossil. So snails can sleep for three straight years. Is that so right or so wrong? Let's find out. That is so right. That's amazing. A snail can sleep for three straight years. All right, next one. A hippopotamus, hippopotamus's sweat is pink. A hippopotamus. This is one of the most dangerous animals, but cutest animals that lives in Africa. Um, They have giant tusks. These guys will actually are the king of the water in Africa. They will put crocs, crocodilians, crocodiles in their place. Uh, They can actually bite a crocodile in half. Um, But is their hippopotamus sweat pink? Is their sweat pink? Is that so right or so wrong? Their skin is pink a little bit. Oh, it's so right. There we go. A hippopotamus' sweat is pink. All right, next one. (laughs) Sloths take two days to digest food. Is that so right or so wrong? I did not get the obsession with sloths um, in our culture. People just love sloths. They want to hold sloths. Uh, But to me, these things look disgusting and nasty, and their hair is so coarse that it just holds all the bacteria. Man, sloths are gross. Uh, personally for me. Uh, Last week we talked about Sid from Ice Age, but then we also talked about uh, the other sloth from Zootopia, and nobody remembered his name. Does anybody remember his name? Flash. Okay, Flash was his name, but he was super slow. So, do sloths take two days to digest their food? Is that so right or so wrong? Let's find out. So wrong. It actually takes two weeks Two weeks to digest their food. Uh, Interesting. That would suck, only to eat every two weeks. Um, If I did that, I would lose a lot of weight, and I would look really good. All right. Uh, Flamingos can only eat while their heads are upside down. Is that so right or so wrong? Um, Did you know that flamingos' feathers are pink from the krill that they eat? That is where they get the pink color in their feathers. You know, I should have been an animal guy. You know, I know all this stuff. Um, But, you know, uh, there's also, I watched, uh, there's a lot of good animal shows on like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime about different animals. 
And these guys actually will uh, go like to one place um, to have their their offspring, and then their offspring take a while before they can actually leave that place and fly um, to somewhere else. But the question is, flamingos can only eat while their heads are upside down. Is that so right or so wrong? I honestly don't know the answer to this one. Let's find out. It is so right. Next one. Tarantulas, tarantulas can survive more than two years without food. Tarantulas can survive more than two years without food. Is that so right or so wrong? Um, this was another thing that we had growing up in Oklahoma. I was actually on my way to graduation when I saw this tarantula, about yay big, scooting across the dirt road, and I stopped and put it in a mason jar and took it home and had it as a pet for a few weeks before it died. Um, but tarantulas are pretty cool. They're, they're, they're fascinating spiders. People get freaked out by them. Um, I would never hold one, even though they say you can hold one as long as you keep your hand flat. Um, but they're cool. They're really cool. They're little fuzzy critters. I like them. Um, f- uh, my wife hates spiders, so she would freak out. So we would, they actually, um, there's actually a pet store out in Shawnee um, called, I think it's Dots Pet Supply or whatever. They actually sell um, pet tarantulas. So if you want to go buy one, there you go. All right, tarantulas can survive more than two years without food. I don't know the answer to this one. Let's find out. So right. They, wow, that's a long time. You would think with the amount of insects in the world that they would need to uh, eat, that they would be having a plenty of a food supply. Um, next one. Koala fingerprints have actually been confused with human fingerprints at crime scenes. Interesting. You know, we, there's this big phenomenon with Tiger King, but how many people are actually keeping koalas in their house? And, and their fingerprints are ending up at crime scenes. Um, that I, was, I was in the office the other day, and the church staff actually called me Tiger King. I was like, yeah, that's cool, because um, I did that Photoshop picture of me. Uh, but anyways, koala's fingerprints have been confused with human fingerprints at crime scenes. Is that so right or so wrong? I'm going to say that it is so right. Boom. Got it. Next one. Honeybees can flap their wings over a thousand times per second. Is that so right or so wrong? I actually have some friends in Oklahoma that raise honeybees and collect their honey. There's actually a a one, there's a, there's a guy that does it actually on Diller Road, just not too far from the church. You can always tell because they have these white boxes about yay big stacked up a little way, three or four stories high, and that's where all the bees come and hang out. Um, but can a honeybee flap their wings over a thousand times per second? Is that so right or so wrong? I don't know. I'm going to say so wrong. Ooh, it's actually 200 times per second. All right. There are 24 known species of dancing frogs. You heard that right. Dancing frogs. They must not be Baptists. Um, but uh, there are 24 known species of dancing frogs. Is that true? Or is it false? Is it so right or so wrong? Um, I actually remember watching a, uh, a documentary on animals and how these um, specific frogs were, their mating ritual was to dance for each other. And then that's how they would, they would attract each other. So let's find out. I think it's so right. Ooh. All right, cool. All right. Polar bears have black skin. Polar bears have black skin. Is that so right or so wrong? Uh, Polar bears are the largest bear on the earth. Um, They live in the, I don't know, north or south pole. Probably both. I don't know. It's one or the other. Um, They live on a a steady diet of uh, penguins and seals and all that good stuff. They're also scavengers. Um, they tend to go for what's easy. Um, they're, they're not going to hunt down something if there's something already laying there dead. Um, but there's a lot of scavengers in the world, so they got to sometimes actually hunt for their food. Uh, there's another cool thing on Netflix about polar bears that I've watched. Um, but are their skin, is their skin black? Is that so right or so wrong? I'm going to say that it is so right. 
Boom. Next one. Butterflies taste with their antennae. Not antenna, antennae, plural, antennae. Butterflies taste with their antennae. Is that so right or so wrong? I have nothing to say about butterflies. Butterflies are weird. And they're all over the place. They're pretty, but they're weird. I mean, they look alienish with their antennae. And then, um, the, I don't remember what the, their tongue is called, but it, they have a tongue that like folds up and then unfolds and goes into flowers. I forget what it's called. But it's this thing right here, because here's their antennae and here's their, their tongue thing. I don't remember what it's called. But butterflies taste with their antennae. Is that so right or so wrong? I actually know this one. Um, it is so wrong because they actually uh, taste with their feet. They actually taste with their feet. How, you would think they would taste with their tongue thing, but no, it's their feet. They're very interesting. Can you imagine tasting with your feet, having taste buds on your feet? All right, next one. Or is that it? All right, if, uh, Rachel, if there is a tie right now, we're going to do a tiebreaker. And so this will decide who is the winner if there is a tie. But everyone can participate. All right, uh, tiebreaker has to do with a fox. We actually saw a fox in our backyard uh, like a year ago or something. I don't know. But the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog, uses every letter in the alphabet. Is that so right or so wrong? If you do any kind of graphic design at all, you would know whether this is right or wrong because when you download a font, it gives you a sentence. And the sentence is... The quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog. So it is so right. It contains every letter in the alphabet. Interesting. All right. That's it for game one. So Rachel's going to figure out who the winner is. She'll text me that. We'll announce it at the end of tonight. Um, that person will get a LBT student shirt. It could be black, could be gray, could be blue, could be green, just depending on your size. And we'll figure out who that is later in the night. We're going to go on with our second game, and this is a, a recap of, of last week. Last week, we played Can It Fart, and this week, we're going to play Can It Fart number two, and so we're going to show you some pictures of some animals, and you're going to tell us, can it or can it not fart, because passing gas is hilarious. It's funny whether you call it fart, flatulence, squeaky butt, I don't know, whatever you call it. It's hilarious. Rachel hates me because I fart all the time. I'm just kind of a, it's probably my diet that makes me gassy, but you know, it just is what it is. All right, so let's start. Bearded dragon. Bearded dragon is a reptile. You can buy them at Petco. Um, they grow to be about yay long. Um, they're pretty neat pets. I've never had one. I've thought about getting one. But can a bearded dragon fart? Can a bearded dragon fart? Let's find out. It can fart. A bearded dragon can fart. I wonder how people, you know, I got to wonder how people figure this out, like, and how they hear it. Um, yeah. So termites. Um, I have never seen a termite look like that, so I don't know if that's actually what a termite looks like. I've seen termites with white wings. Maybe this is like their larva or pupa stage. I don't know. Um, but can a termite fart? Can a termite fart? Let's find out. It can fart. A termite can fart. All right. Uh, a sea cucumber, if you've ever gone to SeaWorld or any kind of like aquarium, they always have the little, the little touch areas, and they're full of these things. Um, and if you, you, you can actually eat these things. And if you cut them open, they like squirt out a bunch of water. It's really crazy. Uh, but can a sea cucumber fart? Can a sea cucumber fart? Let's find out. It cannot fart. I, I, okay, yeah, I would probably agree with that. A shark, a shark. Can a shark fart? That's kind of a tongue twist, uh, a tongue twister. Can a shark fart? Can a shark fart? Um, <laughs> sharks are cool. I don't care who you are. Um, sharks are cool. Um, I've always wanted to go in a cage and see a great white up close, 
That would be so cool. Uh, when we were on our honeymoon, we were like snuba diving, and we saw a couple uh, black tip reef sharks. Those were really cool. Uh, but sharks are just a cool animal. But can it fart is the question. Can a shark fart? Let's find out. It can fart. A shark can fart. A seal. A seal. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can a seal fart? Can a seal fart? Um, it's interesting that sharks actually eat seals, and we just had a shark. Um, and they actually use dummy seals to film Shark Week for Discovery Channel. They drag dummy seals behind them, fake seals, and uh, sharks come flying out of the water to try to eat them. Um, but also, polar bears eat seals. Um, killer whales eat seals. Um, so seals are a, 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 a pinnacle part of the food chain of the ocean. Um, but can they fart? Can they flatulate? Can they pass gas? Let's find out. It's can fart. I would figure, I would think most mammals can fart. Um, yeah, I don't know something about the anatomy, but an octopus, an octopus. Um, these things are creepy, man. These things are not one of those alien looking things. Um, yeah. I mean, just look at that head. It's like alien looking with the eyes and the tentacles. And then you think of Ursula from Little Mermaid. But can an octopus fart? Let's find out. It cannot fart. Okay. You know, I, 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 yeah, I would think with the anatomy of an octopus that it could not fart. Next one. A cockroach. A cockroach. Cockroach. That's an ugly cockroach. And it really, imagine if that was the actual size of a cockroach. Um, can a cockroach fart? Uh, I'm going to say probably Yes. But I don't know that for sure. Let's find out. It's can fart. A cockroach can fart. Interesting. A soft shell clam. Now, these are another one of those things that you, you crack open and, and people eat them in Asia and they spew water. It's kind of like a sea cucumber in a shell. That's what it's like. A soft shell clam. Soft shell clam. Y'all didn't know you were going to get a biology lesson um, at LBT Students Live. You thought you were just going to get some fun and uh, a lesson, but you're actually going to get a biology lesson. How cool is that? Or anatomy, biology, anatomy, zoology, um, all those good stuff. Can a soft shell clam fart? I'm going to say yes. Let's find out. Got that one wrong. It cannot fart. Next one. A beaded lace wing. Whatever that is. I've never seen one of those. Some type of insect. Can a beaded lace wing fart? Interesting looking. Kind of looks like a mayfly combined with a bee or something. A beaded lace wing. Can a beaded lace wing fart? Let's find out. It can fart. So we've learned insects and mammals most likely all can fart. Next one. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Can a dinosaur fart? Um... I definitely know that one can, <laughs> but can dinosaurs in general fart? Um, fun fact, that is not Ben Anderson. I don't know who's inside there, but can a dinosaur fart? Let's find out. It can fart. A dinosaur can fart. All right, that wraps up our games. Um, Rachel's behind the scenes. Like I said, she's going to find out who the winner of those games is. She's going to text me on later tonight. Send me that who the winners are, and I'll announce them at the end of tonight. So if you're a winner, make sure you stay to the end of tonight so that we can announce who that is, so that we can get your size and get you a T-shirt sent to you uh, in the coming week. Um, yeah. So my man, Cool Carl, is back, and he has a message for you guys on how to deal with the quarantine. Hey guys, it's me, Carl. Um, these are my tips for staying sane while in quarantine. Tuna banjo. Take a nap. It's one of the best ways to kill some time. Boost your confidence by fishing for compliments from a friend. 
What about me do you like? Call your main mom. No, main mom. Planet of the Apes is not based on a true story. <laughs> Make sure to keep good hygiene. <laughs> Google image TJ Maxx, just for the fun of it. Read a book. <laughs> the rum is always gone. <laughs> Tell secrets to your dog. Think of a new idea, like turning on a lamp. Become a peanut butter monster. I'm a peanut butter monster. <laughs> Get to know your houseplants better. I once ate three dozen eggs in one sitting. I haven't been the same since. Scream. <coughs> Take a nap. Start collecting cow manure. Wow, what a stack. But then realize you're not supposed to be outside. So quickly run back inside. Self-reflect. Is this really me? How did I end up in this body? What even is a body? And how are we all in these bodies on this giant rock flowing through infinite space of nothingness? A dark, vast, cold, eternal nothingness. And then you realize how hungry you are. Cook an egg. So yeah, that's pretty much the video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed all these tips for staying sane while in quarantine. <laughs> it's obviously helping me, so I'm sure it'll help you. Seriously, I've never been better. Sometimes I'm afraid of the dark. To be honest, I've never seen a baby pigeon. I think Power Rangers is actually a really good show. And it was before its time. I haven't paid my taxes in 10 years. To be honest, I don't even know what a tax is. At this point, I'm just too afraid to ask. Turtles actually freak me out. To be honest, I lost my toothbrush about a month ago. Oh man, that was funny. I hope you guys love Cool Carl as much as I do. He's phenomenal. Uh, he's kind of like a, a hippie, modern day, um, what kind of looks like Jesus. I'm just gonna, you know, long hair, beard, kind of looks like Jesus uh, with tattoos. So he's cool. Uh, <laughs> but Jonathan's gonna get a tattoo uh, in the near future. So tonight, for the lesson, uh, as you can see, we have some special guests, and uh, we shared this on the Instagram story earlier uh, yesterday or today, I don't remember, that we're going to have some special guests. So we have some special guests tonight, um, and so we have Jonathan Acklin, many of you guys know him. We have Anna Acklin, many of you guys know her, and then we have Tanner Zwiebel, many of y'all know her. Uh, Jonathan and Anna are both um, finishing their freshman year in college. And Tanner is finishing her junior year of high school. And uh, yeah, so before we get started with the official discussion, tonight's discussion is a student's response to COVID-19. So that's the topic we're discussing. I'm going to ask these guys some different questions, and they're going to tell us you know, their opinion or, or what they, they think about these different questions. Uh, but before we get into that, I want, in case you don't know them, I want them to tell you just a little bit about them. You want me to go, you want me to go first? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm 19. I go to college for fire science to be a firefighter and a paramedic. Um, I hang out with Michael a lot when he asks me to and help him. Let's see. Uh, if you want to make me happy, make me some chicken because that, that makes my day anytime. Uh, let's see. What else? That's about, that's about, that's about sums me up. I think. Okay. That's perfect. Well, I'm Anna. I go to Lee University to study psychology and Greek. I like to dance and act. So, um, yeah. That's it. I don't know what else about this one. <laughs> Cool, cool. All right. So our first question for our panelists, that was what we're going to call them. Our Say what? Who's? And then Tanner. Uh, turn their gate up. You probably don't even know what I'm talking about. 
but. Yes, wife. Hold on. Let's get this fixed. Now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry. I was told that Anna and Tanner, we cannot hear them. So hopefully we got that fixed. Let's find out. Anna, check your mic. Hello. I think you probably can That's hear me good. now. Tanner. Hello. Sweet, yeah. sweet. So hopefully you guys can hear them now. Got that issue figured out. There's always, every time we try something new, there's always some kind of tech issue. Um, but yeah, our first question tonight is, um, what have you been up to during quarantine? What have you been doing with all of this extra time that you have? Are you going to start with me again? You can, okay, you okay. can, whatever you want to do. I'll start, I'll start. Um, let's see. I've, I've had some extra time to myself, so I've so, I have an electric guitar, so I'm sort of trying to pick that up and learn that. Um, it's a little rough. I've learned some chords. I feel like I don't have, God didn't, didn't give me guitar fingers. I feel like they're kind of fat. So, uh, but obviously that's going well. I'm doing really well. Um, I'm kind of bleeding sometimes. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh. I also downloaded six free weeks of Chris Hemsworth-inspired workouts. If you can't tell, you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, yeah, about that. Um, sometimes for lunch, I'll try to cook something fun just to uh, mix it up a little bit. Maybe I'll have breaded chicken. Um, the next day, maybe I'll have grilled chicken. The next day, maybe I'll have eggs and chicken. You know, no, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, that's about what I'm doing. It's pretty, it's pretty relaxing. Okay. Yes. I am in my last two weeks of college classes, so that has been taking up a lot of my time. Every morning, barely rolling out of bed to get to my desk for my Zoom sessions. Um, and then after that, I babysit every day or every other day now for a family who's, who the girls' whose parents are essential. So that's been fun getting me out of the house. I also am doing the Chris Hemsworth workout with Jonathan, so you can <laughs> probably tell more on me than him, I'm sure. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I like to run, walk a lot <laughs> in the neighborhood. Um, yeah, and then I have been discovering lots of new movies on Netflix, as I said before. So, Well, I, about a month ago, was really, really far behind in school. I'm homeschooled, so I can do it whenever I want, or not do it whenever I want, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. But in this past month, I've been able to like totally knock that out, and now I only have like two days left, three days or four days, depending on how quickly I do it. So that's been great to be done with that. Yeah. And also, I am learning how to play a new song on the piano. That'll be fun. My heart will go on. Mm. <laughs> And as them, mm -hmm. I've also been working out. And Caitlin and I started a no sugar diet. So that'll be fun. After Easter with all the candy that we got. I have another thing. Cool, cool, cool. So you guys have been working out. Uh, yes. I definitely Hopefully have not been good. doing that. Definitely have not been working out. Um, actually, I've probably been eating more than I have been working out. <laughs> um, <coughs> when you got a lot of spare time on your hands, you eat a lot. Um, what are what are some ways that you are uh, staying sane or in touch with yourself or the people around you or people that you have relationships with outside of your house? Um, what are some ways that you're staying sane, staying engaged, staying plugged into um, the world, even though you're spending a lot of time at home? Um, I'm not going to lie. At first, it was kind of hard to stay. Stay sane because not knowing how long we'll be home or um, especially right when they first canceled my college for the rest of the semester, every day it just felt so long and the long term of everything, I couldn't really see like when things would be done and it was just hard to get a grasp on like a good schedule and all of that. But now that I've been babysitting every day, that's nice. It's getting me out of the house. 
I really enjoy my drive to and from because I listen to music and I just have me time. Um, and then I like to go on walks and runs because I listen to podcasts. Um, but as far as staying sane, I think it really helps to have a schedule for me and have like a purpose for every day. Uh, so I have little goals for myself every day and every week that really helps and also just staying in touch with people so that I'm not um, isolated from the community that I used to have. Um, I have horses, well, one horse, so I've been going there every single day and feeding in the morning and riding. So um, I used to have a lot of problems with him bucking and stuff, but now it's all good and we're getting a lot better and we should be able to compete soon, hopefully. Coronavirus allows it, but uh, I've also, I'm able to see my cousins every once in a while and one of my cousins were teaching her to play the flute. I get to go see her and that's good. Uh, for me, honestly, I probably haven't been doing the best at staying in touch with other people. Um, that's mostly because if I have a lot of free time to myself and I've got like work to do, I'll just sit there all day and do it until it gets done. Um, I'll just stay focused, which I guess is a good thing, getting work done, but also I should do better at, I guess, communicating to other people. Um, other than that, though, um, I really haven't had too, too hard of a time coming up with stuff to do. I mean, it's been a little bit boring, but I don't know. Obviously, I'm playing guitar some, some, um, but, uh, that, but that's about it. Working out, um, sometimes I come and bother Anna quite a bit when I'm bored. That's pretty fun, too, I guess. So if you guys have sisters, go ahead and do that. You have my permission. Um, that's about it. I also think um, with having so much extra time, time to think, I've thought of a lot of memories from my past and like a lot of really embarrassing things that I didn't really realize were embarrassing until now that I have so much time to think. So it's been good and bad in a way of just having so much time to yourself, really quality time to discover yourself. Take that how you will. So hopefully you're bettering yourself through that and not embarrassing yourself, but yeah. I've been doing some journaling too, which I'd encourage because that's cool, especially in times like this. I mean, 50 years later, looking 50, back. 50, wow, yeah. Yeah, why not? 50, 20, yeah. even, <laughs> even five would be yeah. interesting to look back on, you know, if you still have those journals, tell what was going on, because that'd be really interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there has never been, there's never been a pandemic like this before in our lifetime, and uh, it's all new. So definitely, I would encourage you to, to reflect and keep some journals and think about what's going on during this time. Uh, next question. Uh, how, and I don't know if we've already covered this a little bit in some of your statements, but go in a little bit more detail. How have you continued to connect with people? How have you continued to have, how do you continue, and not just connect, but have continued to have meaningful relationships with people, even though you're apart? Can Zoom and FaceTime. <laughs> So that's good. Or if you can meet with someone like at a park or something, that's because, yeah, my boyfriend, his parents don't let us actually go to each other's houses. So that's pretty sad. But we've got to be creative going to the park or going on a bike ride. So that's good. Um. Yeah, uh, for me, already going to college, I was leaving behind a lot of my close friends. So I had to learn how to stay in touch with people already. Um, just with scheduled calls weekly and FaceTimes and that kind of thing. So now that's basically just what the entirety of my relationships has become. Um, lots of Zooms and a lot of different group chats for different things. And honestly, now through social media, I would say I probably talk to more people than I would on a regular basis um, on a day when we're not in quarantine. So if you get creative, there are definitely ways to stay in touch, but you just have to be intentional and um, don't always expect someone else to reach out to you. If you're thinking of someone, go ahead and shoot them a text because they may not have the guts to do that, but they're, they're wanting to hear from you as well. So no shame during quarantine. Text anybody you want and keep those relationships in contact. I'm gonna hire you to do my communication for me. <laughs> but like I said earlier, I don't do a good job at it. Um, I have been able to go to a park and longboard with my friend a little bit. That's been fun, so just going outside. Um, but yeah, besides, I guess, staying in contact through like communication on your phone, 
I, I'm not a big texter. I'm, I'm not a big, uh, I don't really just sit there and think about whom I want to talk to this person. If I'm doing work, I'll just finish my work and, I don't know, get distracted by something else. So I definitely could improve um, making more meaningful um, communication with people. So that's definitely something I could probably think about now starting, especially if we uh, go into longer quarantine time. But maybe it's for girls it's different, but I guess for my guy friends it seems like I could be gone for four years and then you just pick up right where you yeah. left off. you know. I, yeah. But um, you I, still st I still definitely need to uh, work on that definitely. But, uh, yeah. How have you noticed um – have you noticed like a difference in the quality of conversation or like the topics of conversation? Um, has it been better? Has it been not as good? Um, what, how, how have you, have, if you, if you would analyze your conversations in person or hanging out with somebody versus your conversations through social media or through texting, you know, what's the difference in that for you? During a time like this, you're probably thinking of more um, bigger ideas like with Probably going to talk more about the government or m deeper than just... So like the hot topics yeah. of what's going on right now in the yeah. world? Yeah, like actually share your opinions and thoughts about something rather than just talking about posts you've seen on Instagram. Or you could still do that, but... I think less of the unnecessary stuff is being said. Um, at first, definitely, I did not like phone calls. I don't like FaceTime. I would much rather talk to you in person. So I strayed away from it in the beginning and then going into a FaceTime or something, it was always like really awkward. You're just staring at each other. What do you say? Because you're not having similar experiences to like talk about. So you just basically have to go through your day. And then once you've done that, what do you talk about? But um, I definitely would say that the, the conversation has been more positive because it's just not necessary to talk about the negative things because it's not you're not with people 24-7, so I don't know. Maybe that's just the people I've been talking to have been intentional about that, but um, wait, I kind of got away from the question. What was the question? No, I think you're answering it. <laughs> okay, yeah. well then I'll just leave it there. Yeah. Um, I would uh, absolutely say that in-person conversations, for me at least, are more in depth and more heart to heart. You're able to, I guess, have that immediate response and talk to somebody and kind of get their, um, you can kind of see their attitude towards it and their uh, body language as they're talking to you and see like how it really means, to, what it really means to them. Um, when I, over text, you kind of have to wait for that response. But like I said earlier, I'm not a very good texter. So maybe people are just kind of bored with talking to me. Maybe some of my, my conversations over text are kind of boring just because somebody's looking for somebody, to, something to talk about. Um, that's probably my fault too. Sorry, guys. But <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, I think over text is a bit difficult, a bit boring to really convey um, good, important topics unless you really have something important you need to talk about. They, those topics, at least in my life, rarely just come up in the middle of a conversation and you just change the whole thing to a deep conversation. If I'm going to have a deep conversation with someone over text, it usually starts. If I text them, like, hey, can we talk about this for a second? Or, like, hey, I've got something really important I want to talk about. Uh, so, yeah. I think also, with ahead. my friend, we've uh, talked about, like, ways that we can help other people. So it's kind of opened our eyes to the world around us more than just ourselves. You know, I, I would say probably most of the people watching this are not asking themselves these questions. They're, you know... At, you know, even the, the, then the younger you go, the closer you get from, you know, 12th grade or even a, a freshman in college to 6th grade, the closer you get to 6th grade, I feel like there's less and less thought about these subjects. You know, how how is this quarantine affecting me? How is it affecting the, the relationships around me? And, you know, that's the, that's the purpose for tonight is to try to help, you know, spark that. I mean, we've been in quarantine now for five, six weeks. And, you know, I think it's important that we reflect on how is it affecting us and what is it doing uh, in, our, in our life and on a personal level, on a spiritual level, on a relational level, all the different stuff. But, yeah, this is good stuff. Um, <clears throat> next question is, how has this quarantine affected you personally? Um, we're going to get a little deeper here, hopefully. How has it affected you personally um, whether it's positive or negative. 
Okay, I guess I'm gonna go first. Um, well, at first, I was home for spring break when everything started getting shut down, and my school was just taking it a day at a time to decide when we would go back or if we would go back. So that gave me a lot of hope because the date just kept getting pushed back, but it wasn't official. And they said they were doing their best to bring us back. Uh, but once they officially canceled, I was pretty upset. I knew there were a lot of things that I was missing out on of my freshman year of college, just like first year program things that people hype you up about that I never got to experience. Um, and so at first I kind of lacked a schedule and like purpose and I didn't really know uh, how it was gonna be or what I wanted to do and or how long it was gonna last. So I didn't really set myself up on a schedule. But um, now that I have, I mean, it's affected me in some good ways. Just being home, I've got the chance to like monitor what I eat better and work out more consistently and um, I'm babysitting a lot, so I'm actually making money, uh, which I wasn't at college, so that's good. But it's definitely not what I would have chosen. It's not ideal. I don't love quarantine. I miss my friends at college. It's harder to have motivation to just to do school. I don't wake up an hour before school and like get ready and talk to my roommate and stuff. I just roll out of bed, get some coffee, and barely make it to my Zoom session. And it's hard to do my homework and, and I don't like sitting in my chair at, in my room instead of switching classes and walking around outside and everything. So that's definitely affected me, but I would say that there's some upsides and a chance to just look deeper at yourself and um, make the most of this time, which I'm sure you hear a lot. A lot of people are like, don't take this time for granted, make the most of it. And I can't say that I have done that perfectly. There are still so many things I'd like to implement um, to be better and take advantage of this quarantine, but there are some good things. I actually was at a horse show like right before it all happened. And I, I'm part of this thing, IA, Interscholastic Equestrian Association. So um, we go to dressage shows and then we get to go to regionals if we get high enough points. And I actually did. And it was my first year that I would be able to do that. But then they canceled it. So that was a big letdown. I don't think that they'll bring it back up. So I was really disappointed about that. But also my college my college classes went online, so that made it really difficult. And like at the beginning of that, I was super stressed out because I'm like, none of this is gonna make sense because like I was doing math in college and I didn't understand it. Like from home, being in class actually helped a lot. But um, the teachers post lots of videos, so I've actually been able to breathe and look at the videos and I understand it now and it's going really well. And finals on Friday, so that's good. <laughs> and um, for me, I've still been able to see some people, my cousins, and I'm really glad that I get to do that. I wouldn't have guessed that I'd be more motivated during this time, having a little bit of extra time, but I've actually been super motivated to get school done and go ride my horse and text people and stuff. So it's been beneficial. For me, I'd have to say um, discipline has been a big thing here. Um, especially like as I'm able to just have a lot of time to myself, I can just say, okay, this is what I want to do. I guess these are kind of the results I want to see in my life, whether spiritually or physically or um, academically. Uh, being able to make a schedule, be disciplined in, with what I eat or how much time I spend doing homework or how much time I spend in the Bible. Um, definitely, I think discipline has been a big, like it's really impacted uh, the way I've gone throughout quarantine. Another thing that's... Um, sort of affected me um, spiritually, but I feel like more of my friends, hopefully. I'm in college, I have, most of my friends are not Christian. So as I was brought home, uh, taken away from college, that kind of put a pause on my ministry there at college. Because um, every day at college, I was able to um, love on my friends, and they were, they, I was the only way that they were going to see Jesus that day. I was the only way that they were going to um, experience the love of Jesus, hopefully if I portrayed that correctly, because I knew they weren't going to sit down and read the Bible for however long. I knew they weren't going to do that. They were not Christians. So that's kind of affected me. Um, it made me a little bit sad as like 
like, God, why'd you do this? Why are you taking me away from these people I was trying to minister to? Because I felt like I was making progress with some of them. Some of them started to ask me questions, um, and I was able to answer them, and we sit down at lunch, able to have some deep conversations. But after I was taken away, that kind of just put a pause on it. So hopefully next semester, if we are able to go back, I'll be able to pick things up where we left off. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of a big question that I've asked. Like, I wonder what's going on there. I wonder how, I wonder what God's plan is for that um, going forward. Um, yeah, that's good stuff. I, uh, you know, this is, I th- even COVID-19 has challenged me as a youth pastor. Um, and I've, I feel like I've been more, I don't know, successful, accomplished, um, determined during this time to get things done. For the most part, there's still days where I'm like, like yesterday I had a headache and didn't want to do anything and yada, yada, yada. But there's still some days where I'm just like, don't really want to do anything. But got a lot done. Had to uh, change up entire philosophy of youth ministry. That was interesting. Um, I also worked on our kitchen and got our backsplash installed. Um, getting a lot of stuff done around the house. That stimulus money is nice. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, next question is, how have you um, reclaimed some of this time or, or some of this, this quarantine for your spiritual growth? Um, what it, have, you, have you taken back that time to grow spiritually, to not only reflect on maybe yourself, but to reflect on your relationship with Christ? Um, how, what does that look like for you during this time? I'll go first. Um, so in college, I was kind of like, it's hard like Anna said, but now she's still uh, tired in the morning. But in college, you kind of roll out of bed, uh, just take the time you need, immediate time you need, and then just go right to class. But now my schedule's been a little bit more relaxed, I feel like. Uh, so I've been able to get up, uh, take a shower, and after I take a shower, before my classes start, I'll uh, spend, spend time in the Word for, I don't know, probably about 30 minutes, 35 minutes before, before my day starts. And I'm able to do that every day to really, and that kind of helps me. I, I just read a devotional uh, about it like two days ago. I said, do that in the morning, and it helps you get your game face on for the rest of the day. So I really, over college too, um, trying to do that in the morning just so I can be better prepared for the day. And it really, I've noticed it really helps, especially if you do it in the morning. It's good to do it any time in the day, but the morning's the best. So that's what I've been doing a lot, uh, especially uh, before my day starts. And then near the end of the day, kind of to unwind, because I don't know if you're, I'm on my computer screen a lot doing classes, and then sometimes I'll text somebody or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's kind of nice to turn off your phone. I've got a few books I'm reading, Christian books I'm reading. So uh, we actually got a book at Passion. I'm reading that. Uh, it's by John Piper, Don't Waste Your Life. I'm reading that before I go to bed, and that's really good. It just helps you unwind. And then uh, after I do that, read a few chapters or whatever, and then I'll get in bed. And then I've actually, over at least um, the past week, I've been watching a sermon every night before I go to bed, just trying to like get my mind in the right place, um, just have something to think about while I'm falling asleep and if I'm praying or whatever. Um, but it, it, really, it really is a great way to unwind at the end of the day. So I'm really trying to revolve everything, a part of my day, uh, around God and around my um, uh, spiritual walk. Yeah. That hasn't, like, really changed much for me because I'm still, I didn't, I didn't gain too much time. But, um, I mean, hearing you talk about this is really encouraging to me because I'm not super... Uh, like disciplined with being in the Word every day, but I have plenty of books that would, you know, like what you said, I have books that I can read, so I definitely encourage myself to actually read those books and anyone else who's out there to, you know, get in the Word too. And, I mean, a big thing that I've thought about is, um, like, growing up, I've always been taught that, you know, the church is the people, it's not just the building. But during this time, I mean, you really realize that it is the people because we're still able to talk to each other and um, do things for each other and we're not in a building but and also realize how blessed we are to have a building to be able to congregate in so I would agree finding discipline when quarantine started was hard because in college I had a church I went to every Sunday just like most of you um, coming here and small group that I led every week and small group prayer and different meetings and stuff like that they were all um, revolved around that, and then here, all the all of those things are gone. Well, they're still available, but you have to choose them. So that's been something interesting to really see. Like, what's your heart for the Lord? Are you still choosing those things when it's not something that someone sees you doing? 
Um, so that's kind of a way that I've been challenged, just challenging myself. But yeah, I would like to say that um, reading your Bible in the morning is like the most beneficial thing. And I do it on the days that I can, but I cannot get my butt out of bed <laughs> early every morning. So a lot of times it ends up being at night. I'm like, you got to shut down the Netflix. You got to get in the word before bed. I would like to be on like a regular schedule at the same time every day. But the way that my days look, it's just like a pop in whenever my hour is here or there. So I've had to be intentional about that, but it's not as disciplined as I would like it to be. But I do like to listen to a lot of sermons and podcasts. Um, and then Christian music, obviously, is always a bop. So, yeah. Uh, so we have a few more minutes and a couple more questions, but we're actually going to open it up for you guys. If you have a question... For this panel, um, write them in the comments, and uh, then Aaron back here will will pick out a couple, one or two, and and we'll discuss the we'll have these guys discuss those. Um, they didn't know that was coming. I didn't know it was coming. Please I just be decided, nice. hey, you know what? Let's do that. Um, so yeah, it's it's really easy because instead of like going around chairs and raising your hand, you can just type it in there. We can choose to answer it or not. Um, but go ahead if you have a question for this group. Um, while we're answering this next question, go ahead, type it in, and uh, we'll see how many we, of those we can get through. Um, so the last question is, what advice would you give other students watching? What advice would you give the students uh, on the other end of this camera? What advice would you give them um, during this situation? I, you know, I know you would give them some throughout the whole discussion, uh, but more specifically, what are some things that you would give them advice about? Well. It may seem, you know, scary, this big fire is coming around, but I mean, just remember that there is someone who's in control of all of this, and he actually has a plan, even though we don't know what it is or see it, but I mean, God's got this, so we don't need to be super, you know, scared about this. Stay calm, and also, um, with some extra time that you may have, uh, you can always call the church, and you can, if you, well, I guess a lot of people can't drive, but you can, I mean, you can, uh, there's elderly people who need uh, food delivered to them, and there's lots of ways that you can help out with that. Um, also, if you listen to, uh, you know, the media and what they say, I'd encourage you to actually listen to what the president says rather than just what everyone takes bits and pieces from. It's really good to listen to what he has to say. So. For me, I thought in quarantine... I have all the time in the world, and there's a lot of things that I want to get accomplished and see progress in. And I was really upset with myself in the beginning when, th like, I wasn't progressing in academics and spiritual life and, and just in, like, physical stuff as quickly as I wanted to. But um, uh, my advice would just be, like, give yourself grace for the progress because progress does look a lot different in this time right now. Um, and I had to learn, like, I still am on a very busy schedule from, like, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. So I don't have a ton of extra free time to be picking up all of the new things that other people are learning. And um, I don't know, lots of people on social media are just talking about all the things that they're doing. And I felt like I was kind of failing by not um, making the most of my quarantine. But I guess my advice would just be uh, know yourself and know what quarantine looks like for you and what progress looks like for you and the things that you want to get out of it instead of comparing yourself to to the way that everyone else is progressing but also um just the big one that everybody probably hears all the time is to stay in touch with people be intentional intentional about making contact with your friends and other people that you know not only because that's good for you but maybe they need checked in on as well also if you're trapped in your home you can also be intentional with your family and I'm sure there's lots of things that, you know, you can do with them. No, no, what she said is good. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't forget your family, too. And, um, like, uh, my mom and I, like, the, she wants to work on the basement stuff. So, you know, you can ask if there's things around the house that need to be done if you have time. And if not, focus on other things. So. Okay, uh, my advice, well, I know a lot of you are a little bit younger than I am, but it took me a while uh, after I became a Christian, it took me a while to actually get serious about it, get serious about what, I've, what I'm uh, doing. And uh, so I want to encourage you right now just to kind of 
have a heart check right now. Just take, take time to think about what you did over these past about 40 days. Uh, where, where was your time spent? Um, what did you, did you spend time, I don't know, getting better at Fortnite? I won 13 <laughs> times in a row. I don't know. Uh, did you read a lot? What kind of things did you do? Did you just mess around? Because um, where, where you spend your time, that, that really shows where your heart is. Mm. So if you think about what you've done, did any of it involve God at all? Did any of it revolve around your walk with God? Um, so I encourage you to really think about that because as I've been spending time in the Word even more and more, um, especially these past 40 days, you, c- you realize that God is literally the most important thing ever. There's nothing more important than that. So what better way to show him that than you have all this time on your hands. What are you going to do? Uh, you can definitely afford to spend some time with him because he is the most important thing ever. So take, take time to think about where you need to maybe adjust your schedule so you can put God into that schedule and really show him that he is important because when it's all said and done, that's what's going to matter. He's not, you're not going to stand before him and say, uh, during these 40 years, these 40 days, hopefully not 40 years, <laughs> during these 40 days, uh, you know, I, I leveled up on my video games by 40. I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? It's like, no, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. How close are you to me? Um, so, yeah, definitely take time to think about that, and I encourage you to adjust your schedule and fix what needs to be fixed. Yeah, it's kind of funny because my phone gives me notifications on my average daily time that I was on my phone, and I don't always like what it says, so... Maybe see that go down. <laughs> so our first question from our viewers is, what is the weirdest thing that you've seen while in quarantine? So what's the weirdest thing that you've seen while in quarantine? Like I saw, um, I saw that news feed where people were spraying their kids with Lysol. <laughs> when they would come home from school or go to school or something, they're like spraying them down with lice. <laughs> uh. I went to Aldi and they had these, what is it called? Yeah, like the plexiglass dividers. Yeah, they had those dividers there and that was, that was weird. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> if you live in my house, all you have to do, all you got to do, for me anyways, all I have to do is open the door and Anna walks out, and I'm like, wow. Every morning, it's, it's a, something weird. It's different. So, yeah, when she says I roll out of bed, go get coffee, and go to my Zoom class, yeah. You can tell. Nothing else has happened between that. I get up two hours before him every day. He doesn't even see me in the morning, so he has no room to talk. You're like that at, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon sometimes. Too. I saw <laughs> someone post on Instagram the other day, wear the same pair of jeans for five days in a row. And you're going to look like you've lost weight. I think that was Shelly Giggly. It was Shelly Giggly. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. I haven't really been around, like, the, cr- the crazy people of COVID-19 who think that, like, it's going to kill everybody. So I haven't seen, like, all the craziness. So I can't say I've seen anything super weird. I don't know if the show Tiger King counts as, like, the weirdest thing I've seen, <laughs> but I have seen that. Definitely so the weirdest thing. <laughs> I saw someone wearing a mask, and they had it, like, pulled up to his nose. And I'm like... What good is that doing? I don't think that's helping anything. Um... What is a way that you have gotten to bless someone that you wouldn't have been able to if you weren't in quarantine? So what is a way that you've been able to bless somebody that you wouldn't have been able to do if you weren't in quarantine? I was able to bless y'all by being here. (laughs) 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 Yeah, but I want to be up here talking like this about this. For me, since I've been babysitting, that is like a job, so I am getting paid for that. But it's a family who recently moved here from Egypt, and they speak Arabic and English. They're bilingual, and so there's, like, a lot of different cultural things that I'm learning and different things I get to talk to them about, um, hear about their religion, and and tell them a little bit about mine. So that's been really cool, building the relationship. At first, I was, like, kind of afraid of just how they thought of me and that kind of a thing, but now when the parents come home, it's easy to have conversation, and I feel like 
we've definitely like broken a barrier there. So that's been a blessing in my life for sure to get to go to that environment every day and build relationships with new people from a culture that I wasn't familiar with before. Um, I haven't done much, I'm not gonna lie, but um, longboarding with, uh, my friend asked me if I wanna go um, longboarding with him. Otherwise, if I didn't go, it would just be by himself. And then while we're doing that, we've been able to have some good conversations kind of about what we're both going through or what's about to happen, what he's preparing for, anything like that. So it just allowed for some different conversations that wouldn't have happened if I was still at college. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, what is a way, okay, now I've already read that one. Never mind. Next one. Um, what do you think you would be doing if you were not in quarantine? You'd be on campus probably still. Yeah, well, yesterday I would have had this big event for freshmen called Love Your Mama, which stands for Alma Mater. So it's like your school. <laughs> and it's for all of the freshmen um, just to appreciate the year. And we would have been celebrated by all of the faculty and staff and like our student leaders with a big party. So I missed out on that. But right now at this time, I probably would have been playing intramurals and I think it'd be outdoor soccer. I would have a game right now so that's pretty sad but that's not what I'm doing or I don't know doing some crazy things with my friends but it's okay I'm glad that I'm here. Uh, right now I would probably be sitting at a big table by myself doing homework. <laughs> like you can find me doing that any other time you walk into the house. I live in a house at college, but um, <laughs> that's about it. That's about it. That's all I do. Uh, besides refing volleyball or refing broom ball on ice, that's pretty fun, which now I don't have a job. But yeah, that's about all I do. Just study. So right now, I would just be studying. I w I'd, yesterday, I would have missed out on some, on a, like a youth group type thing, which kind of stinks. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really glad that I'm here. Otherwise, I would just be studying. So this is much better. I definitely would be super stressed out about school because I wouldn't have gotten it all done with all the time I had and I probably would have spent it with people and going to people's houses and I can't do that as much now so I've done lots of school or I'd be at a horse show because I had a ton of those that were canceled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was really bummed that Converge got canceled uh, and then our Nerf night got canceled uh, that I was really looking forward to. You guys didn't know about it, but... It was, uh, yeah, so that was actually last Friday that we were going to have that Nerf thing. Uh, it was going to be a lot of fun, but we're still going to do it when we come back, probably in the fall. But um, what has the quarantine inspired you to do once you get out of it? What are you like gun ho about, I'm going to do this when I, we get out of quarantine? It'll be For summer, me, so I'll be outside. probably get a good haircut. <laughs> Or go eat at Texas Roadhouse or something. Okay, speaking of haircut, put in the comments, do you think I can pull off a long hair Thor look? Yes or no? Because that's what I'm thinking about doing. I don't know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the Chris Hemsworth workout, asking about a haircut. Yeah, sorry. I say <laughs> yes. Um, you couldn't. You probably wannabe. could, no. but like I just don't like that. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I've been thinking about. Um, just... In a long Jacob Conkelman says yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but I guess since I haven't really been communicating with my friends, I want to have a bonfire. I want to maybe have some sort of party we can get together. I want to go back to church. I really want to go back to church. That's what I'm, that's what I'm excited about. Um, but yeah, really seeing friends and even getting to hang out with my grandparents again. That'd be good. So. Yeah, even just sitting here when you were talking, it seemed so much better. I realize that I, you know, miss being here. I'd rather be at church than on the live feed. And I, yeah, I'd definitely be outside a lot because it'll be summer. So I'm hoping that it'll be nice and warm to go outside a lot and hang out with friends a lot. And I won't have school all summer like I did last year. So I want to have parties. I want to have a bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> I want to um. play volleyball outside i want to go to the pool i want to take people in rides in my new car yeah is that your new car that or is, that is my car? new That's car you can still do that with that me. is carmen rose my fiat yes 
So when quarantine is done, if you want to meet her, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I just can't wait to spend time with people again. Uh, Jacob Kuckelman says you look more like Chris Evans. Uh, I still Travis and Thank Rachel you. and Jacob all said do it. Grow your hair. So out. did I. Go I for said it. no. But I know my mom's watching and she's saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see you big, a, a big, long, burly beard. That's what I want to see. Duck Dynasty? Like, like a 10-inch like a <laughs> beard. I, I had it down to like here before I cut it off, and it was like, that's too long. I think it was. Maybe it was like I there. wish I could grow that, man. I just can't. Is that a lot of work? Right there. Isn't it manicured? Manicured. manicured. That, <laughs> this is a manicure. I don't There's know. That's keeping it. There's no. I've heard. Not my manicure, but something. Okay. Something like something that. Something like that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Cool beans. Well, that concludes our panel discussion tonight. I hope you guys. Uh, had fun. Hey, give a, give them a virtual hand. I know they can't hear it. Um, yeah. You can put it in the comments, though. A little clappy eye, uh, emoji. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, Jonathan will probably be on here again at some point, um, giving the lesson. And uh, yeah, so we have a few more weeks of quarantine. Um, we could be we could be continuing to be online as far as middle of June or even into August before we actually get back here uh, in this room. Um, but during the summer, we'll figure out some cool things to do um, that maybe we can do at my house with a, a smaller group or whatever. What you guys whispering about? <laughs> um, they're having their own whispered conversation over here. Uh, but yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Hope you guys something out tonight. I encourage you, hey, after you get off here and you get on your Zoom groups, maybe think about some of the discussion that we've had tonight and, and, and maybe some thoughts that you have. Share that with your leader. Um, we're going to jump off of here. We're going to throw up this. You guys have something to say before we end? Uh, you look like you have something to say. What thing? Okay. Uh, so we're going to throw up in just a little bit the small group. Um, Zoom IDs, or you can go to our Instagram and click on the link in our link tree, uh, uh, link, 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 but um, <laughs> a lot of links in that. Um, so yeah, so jump off of here, join our, our, our Zoom group, and uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit, and Rachel will see you girls in a little bit. Love you guys, Love you guys and, and you're, you're free, free to go, go to Zoom. <laughs>